The Escalade is one of a small handful of vehicles that can claim to be true American icons. All the way from 1999 to today, it's still the quintessential status symbol, which says, I made it in a uniquely American way. And no model says that as well as this $101,000 Platinum trim. But this review will also cover the standard and luxury trims. So with the reinvented Navigator just around the corner, let's see if the Escalade has what it takes to stay on top. We would like to specially thank Quantrell Cadillac for letting us come out and film this vehicle. If you'd like to find out more information about their dealership and massive inventory of new Cadillacs, then check the video description for both their physical and web addresses. The Escalade comes with smart entry and Cadillac stylish key fob. It has a really great feel in the hand. And you'll also find standard remote start. To unlock, just press the button on the door handle. Before we check out the opulent interior, let's first see what's changed in the powertrain department. The Escalade doesn't see many changes for 2018 overall, but there is one important one under the hood. This generation of the Escalade started out with a 6-speed automatic transmission switched quickly to an 8-speed auto, and for 2018 uses an all-new 10-speed automatic transmission. That new transmission, however, remains hooked to the same 6.2-liter V8, producing 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. Cadillac says 0-60 to 60 will decrease from the already fast 5.8 seconds of the old model. You can continue to pick between 2 or 4-wheel drive on every turn. Now you probably expect fuel economy to rise because of the new transmission, but it doesn't. The city rating actually decreases by one from last year, but the highway is up by one, so overall there's no change to a combined rating of 17. Anyways, now that we've got that out of the way, let's move on to the bold exterior. So this generation of the Escalade came out in 2015, but the styling hasn't seen much in the way of changes since then. That means you'll continue to find the signature large and bold grille, which is basically a supersized version of what appears on other Cadillac vehicles. There are still two versions, with the Platinum getting this extra bold version, and all the others getting one with more black space between the bars. Turning to the headlights, they're the same across all trims, and feature a really unique stack design. They do have LED low and high beams, and the daytime running lights connect down this portion, like on Cadillac sedans. Most people won't take something this expensive off pavement, but it is an option with 8 inches of clearance. As you would expect, there is a wide range of wheels to choose from, ranging from plain to extreme bling. These are one of the optional 22-inch wheels for the Platinum trim, which I think are probably the best-looking ones. The standard Escalade does come with 20-inch wheels, but all the other trims have standard 22s with their own unique design. And just for fun, I'll edit in some pictures of some of the more outrageous-looking options. The brakes are a 13-inch ventilated disc in the front and 13.6-inch ventilated disc in the rear. And somewhat hilariously, you can actually get six piston Brembo brakes for about three grand. The tires are all seasons. Coming up to the mirrors, they are power adjusting, heated, power folding, and auto dimming across all models. 
You will also find side blind zone alert on luxury and above, which lights up this little indicator. The door handles are illuminated on premium luxury and up. So backing up here is where you can really tell the difference between the regular and ESV Escalades. This one comes in at 224 inches long, which is a full 20 inches longer than the standard version. That also makes it 2 inches longer than the new Navigator L. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety doesn't rate vehicles this big, but I can talk about the active safety technologies on board. Starting on the luxury, you get the driver's awareness package, which includes low speed emergency braking, lane keep assist, and auto high beams. Moving up to the premium luxury unlocks the driver's assist package, which includes adaptive cruise control, as well as fancier radar-based front and rear auto braking. The ESV Escalade comes with a massive 31-gallon fuel tank. That means that despite the low fuel economy, the range is still an impressive 527 miles for both the 4x2 and 4x4 models. And Cadillac does recommend a premium fuel, but it's not required. Looking at the back of the Escalade, it continues to have the signature boxy design. You do have a big chrome accent across the back, but the most eye-catching design element are these giant vertical taillights. They are fully LED and connect nicely with other Cadillac vehicles. Down below the bumper, you have an exhaust pipe and a full-size spare tire. As far as towing is concerned, the ESV Escalade can tow 8,100 pounds with two-wheel drive and 7,900 pounds with four-wheel drive. You do have a standard spoiler, and these roof rails are also standard. Well, that wraps up everything on the outside, so now we'll move on to the luxurious interior. As you probably heard earlier, the Platinum does have power deploying running boards. So looking inside the cabin of the Escalade, it continues to have a very rich looking design. Every trim can choose this jet black color scheme, but the standard only has the additional option of shale. The luxury trims further add the option of Kona Brown for an additional charge, while the Platinum instead offers a brand new color option called Maple Sugar. Every trim does feature real leather, but you'll only get the high-end semi aniline leather on the Platinum. Turning to the door trim, you'll see that it's also richly appointed with a lot of soft leather on the armrest and Alcantara all through the middle portion for Platinums. The top part is also real leather on the Platinum and this wood is also exclusive to it. Up here you'll find the two-person memory function, standard on every model. Strangely, the windows are only auto down in the back while they are both in the front. The seats on most Escalades are 12-way power adjusting, but on this Platinum trim they are 18-way with 3-mode massaging. You control that function and the lumbar through this pad. So like I already mentioned, this is the semi analog leather, and it feels as wonderful as it does on every car. With the giant running boards, getting in is easy. I haven't been in an Escalade since 2015, but I have to say the cabin is still impressively nice, as are the materials, especially in the Platinum. All of the upper dash is covered in stitched leather, which is something you usually don't see. The middle part has more Alcantara and that exclusive wood. Additionally, on the center tunnel, there is more leather on both sides, and everything fits together nicely. To start, just press the standard button. 
After you do, the standard 8-inch display will fire up. It does not have the latest software, but we'll get into that later. So every Escalade gets this really slick looking 12-inch reconfigurable gauge cluster. By using this knob on the steering wheel, you can control between three sectors. On this side you basically have things related to driving, and in the middle you can change the speed display. On the right side you have all your media and entertainment. But the part I really enjoy is the ability to change the entire design. Overall, I have to say that this is one of the nicest all-digital setups I've experienced. To go along with that, we also have a heads-up display. This comes on all but the base trim, and you can cycle through all the expected stuff, plus navigation if activated. The Escalade steering is electric power assisted, fed through this beautiful leather wrapped wheel with wood and aluminum accents. On the left side, we have controls for the cruise control, phone, and the standard heated steering wheel. On the other side, you'll find audio and a button for the gauge display. The wheel itself does also power adjust on every trim. And yet another nice standard feature is rain sensing wipers. I just wish they would upgrade the switch gear. Also like the Tahoe and Yukon, you have a column shifter. You can manually control shifts with this little toggle. And pressing the end activates a special towing mode for the transmission. When you shift into reverse, Cadillac nicely includes a 360 degree camera on all models. Which is nice because you'll need it. I will say though that the picture quality needs an upgrade. Moving on to storage, the Escalade has more than enough for any need. On the Platinum, you have a cooler that takes up most of the center console space. But it is still nice to have something like that. But you do still have a 12 volt outlet and two USB ports inside. This pad does function as a wireless charger. Up here in the front, you have another nice belt-lined area, with more connections and even cooling. And finally, pressing the bottom of this reveals a secret storage area with another USB port. The climate functions live on this panel. They are three-zone automatic on every trim, and all the buttons are touch capacitive. Some features, like zones, are on the display. It does also have haptic feedback, but overall physical buttons would be more functional. Off to the side of that, you have three-stage heated seats for butt and back, and also three-stage ventilated seats on every trim level. Now let's sample the 16-speaker Bose Centerpoint sound system, standard across the board. be able to pick up on it, but sound quality is phenomenal. One of the best I've experienced. The slider for the volume seems to be a lot more responsive than the other buttons. Anyways, let's take a quick look at the Cadillac user interface. This is not the newest version of Q, but it functions much the same, and is still responsive. In audio, you can play and pause songs through the standard Bluetooth. Along the bottom you have the presets, and along the top you have shortcuts to the other functions. In phone you can view all of your contacts automatically synced over from your smartphone, and many other things. And speaking of smartphones, when you plug in a smartphone this projection button changes to either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. 
You can use the map associated with those, but every Escalade does come with integrated navigation. Pitch to zoom is supported, and moving around is responsive. Also a neat feature is that the menus hide when they're not in use, and then reappear when you reach for the screen. OnStar. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the OnStar system. Wi-Fi. There are a lot of things it can do, but I mentioned to say you're probably looking for the Wi-Fi. Thank you. Goodbye. If you want to see a more detailed look at all the Q system, then check out our dedicated tech help video. A link is provided in the description. Off to the side of the screen, you have a few buttons. This one changing the drive modes for the suspension tuning, transmission, and steering feel. There are also power pedals. These are standard across the board. The Escalade comes standard with an auto-dimming mirror, but the Luxury and Up get this awesome rear-view mirror. This is such a handy feature, since this thing is practically like driving a bus. You also have universal remotes to go along with it. Surprisingly, this moonroof does not come on the base model. Additionally, there is no pano due to the rear seat entertainment. On the platinum, all the roof is suede as well. So overall, the cabin of the Escalade is well executed. It is extremely luxurious, stylish, and feature-packed. And besides for a couple buttons and switches here and there, there is no connection to its plebeian relatives, the Tahoe and Yukon. It's aging gracefully and should hold its own against the new Navigator. What you are hearing is the rear seat reminder. It goes off if the rear door has been opened a short time before or during the latest trip. Now let's check out the rear seats and cargo. Looking into the rear of the ESV, you'll find 39.7 inches of legroom and 39.1 inches of headroom. That makes it a bit bigger than the standard size Escalade, but a bit smaller than the Navigator second row. Cabin's chairs are standard, but you can get bench seating if you prefer. Turning to the door trim, it's exactly the same as in the front, with leather, alcantara, and wood all around. The window back here is only auto down. The rear seats are covered in the same semi aniline leather. So back here you have a ton of amenities. These are touch capacitive climate controls, which would light up when the vehicle's on. You also do have seat heating. Underneath you have a ton of other connections, and further down is a household outlet and a toll bolt outlet. A lot of these connections are for not one, but four rear entertainment screens. I have no idea why you would need this many, but they're there if you figure one out. The headliner is very soft, and every seat has a vent above it. So I'm 5'8", and as you can see, there is plenty of space with the front seat adjusted to me. On this side, the seat is all the way back, and legroom is still decent. But looking into the third row is where most of the ESV benefits are. There's actually enough space to sit comfortably, but more importantly, my feet have a place to go. There is a toll bolt outlet and two cup holders. The leather back here is not a semi outlet.
there are two ways to get into the back, the first being just a glass. I like having this option. Most rifles don't. The tailgate itself is foot activated. Once inside, you're obviously going to find a lot of space in this ESV version. With the third row in place, you get a massive 39.3 cubic feet of space. If you fold the third row, you'll find 76.7 cubic feet, and 121.1 cubic feet with the second row folded. The seats are power controlled. If you have something that won't fit in here, then your next step is to get a semi-truck. A detailed pricing breakdown will be at the end of the video. The seat on this side is the same 18-way power adjusting with massage. I really like the leather dash. To open the glove box, you have to press this button. It is nicely felt lined, if a bit smaller than I expected. Well guys, that wraps up this detailed look at the 2018 Cadillac Escalade ESV Platinum. Stay tuned for the pricing information of this particular model, as well as the rest of the Escalade lineup. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.